All right, I wanna do a super quick review of the two lenses I got from Fujifilm to use with the X-T5 for that review. I wanna quickly talk about these lenses separately from that camera. Uh, and those two lenses are the 16 millimeter F2.8 and the 50 millimeter F1.0. Let's start with the, let's start with the 16 millimeter F2.8. So as you can see, it's pretty compact, kind of fits in the palm of your hand. It is weather sealed. There is a, a small pedal style hood that does come with it, but it's inside. I didn't grab it and bring it out here for the review. Um, it's F2.8 to F22. It's, it's a great little lens. It's nice and sharp. It's compact, it's light. Uh, build quality feels good. It feels like it's all metal, but again, being such a, uh, a small lens, it doesn't add a lot of weight to the front of your camera. I think that for me, I would rather shoot a zoom lens at this focal length if it's f2.8. If you're getting into something faster like f2 or f1.4, then I would shoot a prime. This lens for me, I can kind of replace it with the 18 to 55 f2.8 to 4. You know, that's just a personal preference for me. If I want to go wider, I can even use the uh, 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens, which is f3.5 at the wide end, so it's only one stop different. Yeah, just, but if you wanted something really compact and lightweight to put on uh, something for travel, yeah, it's pretty good at video too. Obviously it's not, doesn't have any stabilization. It's a small prime lens, but yeah, it's a, it's a good, reasonably fast, wide angle lens with uh, good sharpness, nice contrast, and the autofocus works really well. I shot this on the X-T5 as well as on the X-T1, performed well on both cameras. Okay, so the other lens that I wanna talk about is this 50 millimeter F1.0. Now this is not a compact lens by any means. Let's just hold these up. hold these up side by side. So this is the 50, this is the 16. It is an absolute monster of a lens. This lens is heavy, as you can imagine. There's a lot of glass in this lens. Um, it is weather sealed. It does come with a very large hood. Again, that's inside. I didn't bring it out here. F1.0 to F16. Both of these lenses do have aperture rings, which is great. Um, this lens, I really enjoyed shooting this lens, uh, especially at night. I liked being able to have a faster shutter speed at night and still get some really nice background separation uh, on the subjects I was photographing. Obviously you're gonna get crazy out of focus areas if you really want to with this lens. But I think for me, the, the best part about it was being able to have that quicker shutter speed for nighttime photography and this is about an 85 millimeter equivalent 50 80 no sorry this is a 75 millimeter equivalent on um, an APS-C sensor so you're getting a bit of telephoto with this on that sensor so you think of a 50 millimeter lens as like a standard prime lens in 35 millimeter terms but with it being on APS-C it's actually a sort of a short telephoto lens and you do get a bit of compression with this lens obviously not as much as a true 75 mil would get you but on the smaller sensor it does give a bit of a telephoto look this lens is so front heavy though so when you put it on the camera like it really wants to pull your camera forward like whoa. Man, don't drop the really expensive lens they let you borrow, Scott. So it really, really leans forward. It's a bit of a workout shooting with this thing. I didn't use it much for portraits, which I think is what this is really for. I didn't really use it at all for portraits. Um, kind of a miss on my part, but regardless, um, for low light photography and videography, it's great. Again, no, no OIS built into this thing. It's a 50 mil prime lens. The focus ring on this particular example is quite loose. Um, there's not a lot of resistance to it. It is focused by wire, so I don't, I don't know if that matters particularly, but if you're pulling focus manually with this, very easy to do uh, if you're shooting video. 
uh, maybe a little too easy. Might, might be easy to bump. Yeah. I don't know. But anyways, overall, two great lenses. Um, this one's a bit more of a, you know, if you have the money kind of lens. I think the 56 f1.2 or the 35 1.4 or the 33 1.4 are probably more affordable and better options for most people uh, but I mean if you've got the means it's definitely available f1.0 is just crazy um, yeah that's it so super quick review two lenses both worth checking out uh, yeah that's all I got I'll see you guys in the next video